The dialectics of contradiction is the heart of communist philosophy and the explanation of how revolutionary change happens. Dialectical thinking has been around for a long time. Our sources for dialectics go back for many centuries. Heraclitus, an ancient Greek philosopher, expressed the most important idea in dialectics this way. He said, conflict is the father of everything. Of course, he should have said that it's the father and mother of everything. He meant conflict makes things change, and conflict is the only way things change. Everything new comes out of conflict. Building on earlier dialectical philosophy, Marx and Engels developed dialectics about 150 years ago. The communist movement in the USSR and China added to dialectics, but not all of what they added is correct. Leaders of the old socialist movements like Lenin and Mao Zedong studied dialectics and fought to teach the working class to understand and apply it. Later in this video, we will see some ways that dialectics is needed to understand how the capitalist system works, what its fatal weaknesses are, and how to defeat it. We already know that many things and processes are connected, and then in some of those connections, the things connected oppose each other. A concept of dialectics that we need to understand then is opposition, the relation of connected opposites. The relation between a parent and a child is an example of opposition. This may seem a little strange since many people get along well with their parents and their children and are not in conflict with them. As the term opposite is used in dialectics, however, the parents and their children still count as opposites. Within each parent-child relationship, one side is the parent and not the child, and the other side is the child and not the parent, so the two sides exclude each other. It is also true that parents have a big effect on their children and children have a big effect on their parents. Thus, the parent-child relationship has both exclusion and dependence, and so we have an example of opposition. In general, we can define opposites this way. Opposites have a connection with each other, so that each side requires or depends on the other, or is affected by the other. Opposites also exclude each other, and each side has some property that the other does not have. Here are some examples of opposites. Notice that the last example, workers versus capitalists, differs from the others. Buying and selling, or theory and practice, can help each other out. But the relationship between capitalists and workers is always exploitation and resistance. They don't help each other out. In the rare cases when capitalists do something that workers actually want, it's only a tactic to keep exploiting them. Workers and capitalists interfere with or block each other. This is the kind of opposition that we need to focus on. An essential idea of dialectics is that some opposites struggle or interfere with each other. This kind of opposition is called a dialectical contradiction. Every opposite relation has to have some kind of unity or mutual dependence. But opposites that struggle, whose opposite sides hold each other back and interfere with each other, are called dialectical contradictions. This means that a dialectical contradiction is a unity and struggle of opposites. To learn about dialectical contradictions, we will look at a number of examples. In capitalist society, the most important dialectical contradiction is the one between the working class and the capitalist class. 
This contradiction shows itself in many ways, including strikes and demonstrations. For capitalists and workers to be opposites, each side must affect or depend on the other. This opposition is a contradiction, so capitalists and workers conflict and interfere with each other. Capitalists need workers to make profits for them, but they struggle to keep workers from revolting. As long as capitalism exists, workers need to get jobs from capitalists, although capitalism often produces mass unemployment. Under capitalism, capitalists need workers and workers need capitalists, but they constantly battle each other. Class struggle is not the only place to find dialectical contradictions. The unity and struggle of opposites is everywhere. A soccer match is a contradiction between two sides. The two sides are united in a single game, with each side fighting to score goals. Both teams often play defense, however, trying to hold the other side back and interfering with their attempts to score. There is one important difference between a soccer contradiction and class struggle, however. When the referee blows the final whistle, the contradiction ends and the team may go out for a beer together. Class struggle does not have a referee. It continues until the capitalist class is destroyed. Capitalist countries sit in a network of relations that have both unity and struggle. These countries trade with each other and make political, economic, and military alliances. This is a kind of unity. Despite some degree of unity, capitalists compete for control of resources and labor. The governments of each country struggles to make maximum profits for their capitalists, holding back the others with tariffs, diplomacy, powerful organizations like the International Monetary Fund, and eventually by war. The contradictions between the biggest capitalist powers, the imperialists, dominate the politics, economics, and ideology of the whole planet. Contradictions don't just happen in society. There are also contradictions everywhere in nature. In the center of an atom, for example, there's a contradiction between the forces that hold it together and other forces that tend to drive it apart. If the forces holding the action atom together are stronger, then the atom will be stable, at least for the time being. If the forces that drive the atom's particles apart become stronger than those that hold it together, then the atom comes apart. If this happens to many atoms at the same time, the result is a huge explosion. In the working class movement, there are extremely important contradictions between the revolution and the kind of politics that try to compromise with capitalism. Revisionism is the name for politics that claims to be Marxist but in fact submits to capitalism. Led by Lenin, the Russian Bolsheviks fought a long, determined struggle against many forms of reformist or revisionist politics like those of the Russian Mensheviks and the German Social Democrats. It was only because of that struggle that the Bolshevik Revolution was able to win in 1917. It was also the failure to defeat pro-capitalist ideas like socialism that eventually defeated the communist movement in Russia and China. The struggle between revolution and revisionism always takes place inside revolutionary parties, including ICWP. The great proletarian cultural revolution in China, which began in 1965, was the world's first example of a mass struggle against revisionist politics, a struggle that lost out and the communist movement was defeated in China. Contradictions are important because they make things change. As Heraclitus said, conflict is the father and mother of everything. The main reason why dialectics is important is that understanding contradictions 
makes it possible to understand how reality must change and how to make the changes we need. The internal back-and-forth struggle of the two sides of a contradiction not only cause change, but points that change in a particular direction. The way the change happens can be smooth and gradual for a while, but contradictions also produce big sudden changes, revolutions, wars, explosions, and economic crises. As long as capitalism lasts, its internal contradictions push capitalist society toward crisis and revolution. The contradictions of the U.S. financial system produced a huge crisis in 2007. That crisis spread to Europe and eventually affected most of the world. This crisis made class struggle in Greece much more intense. Contradictions inside the center of an atom can make it break up into smaller atoms. Once an atom is split into two, the contradictions that made it split are over and done with, and new contradictions begin inside the new atoms. Once a contradiction ends, we say that it is resolved. A key issue about contradictions is how they get to be resolved that is, stop being contradictions. It's also important to ask what is left over after a contradiction is resolved. Contradictions in society and nature are resolved by their conflict becoming more intense, that is, by the struggle of the two sides becoming stronger. Eventually, one side defeats the other. Compromises and truces don't resolve these contradictions, they just make the resolution take longer. If the defeated side is destroyed, the contradiction is resolved. If one side only achieves a stronger position, the contradiction still exists and the weaker side might be able to strike back. That is why a communist revolution must wipe out capitalism everywhere and not allow capitalist relationships to continue as they do under socialism. Like contradictions in society and in nature, contradictions between ideas are usually resolved by becoming more intense and one side being defeated. In this case, however, it is the ideas that get defeated and not necessarily the people who agree or used to agree with those ideas. Scientific researchers who discover a new theory try to win over those who agree with the old view. The new idea wins if most researchers eventually accept it. The same is true for disagreements inside the party. The contradiction between opposite ideas is resolved when the internal debate persuades most people that one view is right. Sometimes it happens that the best thinking combines some parts of each side's ideas. This happens when each side had some truth in it, but was one-sided, which means that it did not include the whole story. Since contradictions are everywhere, contradictions inside the party are normal and unavoidable, and the struggle to resolve them helps keep the party's ideas moving forward. This struggle includes debate among different points of view and can take time, since more practical experience may be necessary to come to a conclusion that most can accept. It's tempting to try to avoid disagreements with comrades, but this attitude does not help resolve contradictions that inevitably come up. Contradictions are resolved by becoming more intense, not by being swept under the rug. Contradictions in physical processes also produce movement. When a gun fires, the hot gases in the chamber and the metal walls of the chamber push on each other and form a very intense contradiction. The contradiction between the pressure of the hot gas on the metal walls and the pressure of the walls on the hot gas 
can only be resolved when the gas escapes. But the gas can only escape when the bullet moves out of the barrel, fast. When the gas escapes, the contradiction is over since both the gas pressure and the force from the metal walls have ended. Resolution of the capitalist worker contradiction is not like a shot from a pistol. The resolution does not happen quickly since it takes a long time for the working class to build up its communist party and make the contradictions intense enough to resolve it. The capitalist also needs to get weaker for the workers to win. We know this will happen since it's part of the nature of capitalism to produce economic crises and tremendously destructive imperialist wars, which seriously weaken the capitalists, at least for a while. The laws of motion of capitalism, like the tendency of the rate of profit to fall, will create capitalist crises and give us our opportunities. Right now, the masses are mobilized for reforms in many places. As the party mobilizes the masses for communism, that movement will create more intense crises for capitalism and resolve the worker-capitalist contradiction by communist revolution. Communists understand that true ideas, including true theories, have power. This is not the idealist view that ideas change the world all by themselves. It means that what people believe and understand motivates what they do. Marx wrote that material force must be overthrown by material force, but theory also becomes a material force as soon as it is gripped by the masses. The main thing that drives the communist movement forward, however, is the contradiction between the needs of the masses and the poverty, murder, racism, repression, diseases, imperialist wars, economic crises, and all the other miseries that capitalism imposes on us. This video tries to show some of the ways that dialectics helps us understand the many-sided contradiction of capitalism with the needs of the masses. Dialectics is a vital tool for mobilizing the masses to win the fight for communism.